The audaciously rotund and powerful Kyriakos Kapakulek, or Kyriakos Grizzly as many know him by, is a fitness enigma. Many viewers laugh at his style of training and antics, and then after years of sticking to his unorthodox training, they begin to respect it. We have seen this with many oddball fitness icons in the past. We laugh at them, we meme them, and then we honor them. And this is because these people are so invested in what they do, the energy of whatever it is they do, transfers through our screens into us and we cannot help but be fascinated by it, and in a way, envy it. Kyriakos famously states, you have to live it. And he is unrelenting in who he is. However, the mantra of the Grizzlies that I would like to focus on today is his answer to the question, why do you train? He ever so elegantly responds, I train for the difficult. There's a documentary on the White Stripes that came out in 2009 that has stuck with me since I watched it as a hopeless 19-year-old, particularly this specific interview with Jack White. I don't have those inspirations like that anymore. I, one part of my brain says I'm tired of trying to come up with things in this box, you know, but I, but I force myself to do it because I know something good can come out of it. But uh, that was one of the things was like, whether we like it or not, write some songs and record them, you know, force yourself into it. Force yourself, book, book, book only four or five days in the studio and force yourself to record an album in that time. You know, deadlines and, and things cre make you creative, but opportunity and telling yourself, oh, you got all the time in the world, all the money in the world, you've got all the colors in the palette you want, anything you want. I mean, that just kills creativity. I like to do things to make it really hard on myself. Uh, like, for example, I don't have, like, if I drop a pick, the pi to get another pick, I've got to go all the way to the back of the stage to get another one. I don't have picks all taped to my microphone stand. I'm, I put the, the organ uh, just far away enough that I have to leap to get to it to play different parts of a song. It's not handy to, to, join, to, to jump from one thing to the next. I always try to push it a little bit farther away so that I have to work harder and get somewhere. That way, everything, all that stuff, all those little things, and there's, there's hundreds of those things like that. You know, those guitars I use don't stay in tune very well, and they're not, um, they're not conducive. They're not what regular bands go out and play. Uh, that's important to do all that kind of stuff. When you go out and everything's all pre-planned and everyone sets everything out for you and the table's all set and nice and perfect, nothing's going to happen. You know, you're going to go out and do a, a, just this boring arena set or something. So that's why that's, that's what, uh, all those things have always been a big uh, component of the White Stripes, you know, constriction to force ourselves to create, you know, only having red, white, and black colors on any of the artwork or the presentation or the aesthetics of the band and uh, guitar, drums, and vocals, you know, uh, storytelling, melody, and rhythm revolving all these things around the number three. These, all these components force us to, to create. If I look at my weightlifting past endeavors, where I can really draw my success from is the difficulty with the sport that I was initially dealt with. Starting at 23 years old with a back squat of less than 125 kilos, being 6 foot 4 and having played field sports my whole life, those things didn't exactly lend themselves to snatching and clean and jerking, but they allowed for my creativity and my approach to blossom. How I attacked my weaknesses and how I was continually searching for refinement in my movement was all because of the difficulty of my starting situation. Like Jack White had said, my creativity had stemmed from difficulty. So now if we look back at Kyriakos, we can see his very creative lifts securing the difficulty, therefore creating the energy which we are continually drawn to. If you search for the difficult, the creative will find you. The creativity will motivate you to again search for the difficult and the cycle will continue until you have made something that you couldn't even fathom when you had set out to train. However, it's important to understand the other side of this. Having guidance, having some sort of plan, and receiving influence. It isn't necessarily advisable to have zero plan and just search for the difficult. That is, if you have clear-cut, long-term performance based goals. A perfect example of this is the career of the highest ranked American male weightlifter at the moment, Nathan Damron. Nathan was built for this sport in my opinion. He has superior genetics to squatting and the grit of a workhorse to boot. 
In the gym early on in his career, he coined the term train stupid. Now, this was more of a retort to all of the technique Nazis and internet coaches who said that he went too heavy too often, but having spoke with the guy, that is more or less what he did for years. And this brought him fantastic results until it didn't. He was training for the difficult and the difficult only. He had stagnated with his performance and he had accrued a lot of injuries. If we look at Nathan's performance now, he is on an absolute tear. And like I had said, he is the top ranked male weightlifter in America. He told me he snatched 60% or 100 kilos for 30 reps and video reviewed every single one of those reps in one session for two hours. That was on his own volition. His mindset basically has reversed. Now, when he has to train hard or compete, he greets the difficult with open arms because it's an old friend. It's not a threat to him. So now that we can see the duality of training, the pragmatism of planning like Nathan has gone through, and the brute force of training for the difficult, something like Jack White or something like Kyriakos does, what should we do? First, let's talk about training for the difficult. It is something as easy as forcing yourself to go to the gym, but with many smaller steps. The number one technique here that I use is in my head, I tell myself everything I am doing as if it is the action that I am working towards. So that is the actual goal, right? So this sounds insane, but hear me out. Before my heaviest snatch sessions, I would be filled with doubt. So a technique I came up with was to tell myself that all I have to do is snatch the barbell today. Okay, I walk up, I snatch the barbell to the best of my ability. Wow, that felt really good. Let's put 50 kilos on. Only gotta snatch 50 kilos today. Man, that felt pretty good too. 70 kilos, felt great. 90 kilos, 100 kilos, 110 kilos, 115, 120, 125, all the way up to 130, where then I was snatching over 90% and I was on a competition platform. Do this with your actions. You just have to get to your car. You just have to drive to the gym. You just have to warm up. Jesus, I have even said, you just have to step your right leg closer to your car. You just have to step your left leg closer. Your right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. You can do this with everything. Every action is a victory. When you work a nine to five job, when you're not feeling it, every single thing you do is for the difficult. All you have to do is find a way to manage those things so you can continually move forward. Secondly, we need to think about the pragmatic side of this. Be your own coach. The rep isn't just a completion of the movement. Create harder boundaries to call it a completed rep. An example I use is if I have to wiggle around and save the bar in a snatch, or if I step forward when I stand up, it's not a completed rep. The rep must be perfect. There must not be any wiggling around and no stepping forward. The same can be said with someone doing something as simple as the dumbbell bench press. The rep doesn't count if I don't control the eccentric portion enough or if I don't get a full range of motion or stretch in my pectorals. Creativity, difficulty, and pragmatism are required for a positive gym experience. And if you have a positive gym experience, you're likely gonna continue to go. So focus on training for the difficult. Have the pragmatism of having a goal and go out there and kill it.